In this lecture, we'll be talking about Docker volumes. So what is this Docker volume? Well, Docker volumes are preferred mechanism for persisting data generated by and used by the Docker containers. And volumes are stored outside the container's file system, which means they are not part of container's writable layer and can persist data even when the container is stopped, removed, and updated. So basically, you can think of volume pretty much like an storage file system which is outside of the container and you can use the storage file system to store the data and you can even get the data while the container is running and even if the container is completely deleted or destroyed you can still get the data out from the volume because that is the power of the volume itself so we'll discuss about the entire power of the volume in this lecture in a more diagrammatic fashion so consider this Every single time while you create a Docker container, you can also create a volume associating to that Docker container. And most importantly, you will notice that the volumes are persistent, which means every single time that you inject any data into the volumes, those data will be persistent. So even if the Docker container is kind of removed, your data will still be secured and you can still use the volume from the place where you have left it. In fact, you can also use the existing volume data to a new container if you really wanted to by just pointing to the volume that you are referring to and your new container can get the data right from there. And this is also very, very useful while you want to share the data among two containers. So you can do that as well. And this is going to be very, very handy while you actually do it for your application where you have got a database running within one container and you wanted to use the data in multiple different container where you have got the applications which need the data access from multiple different containers you can do that by just pointing it to that particular Docker volume and then you can access the data from everywhere. That is how you actually do it. And if you're going to be running this Docker container in your local machine, you know that all the time the data is going to be stored within your local machine itself. I mean, the volume also stored within your local machine as well. But if you are going to be running a microservice or a big enterprise grade application, then this volumes can be stored in a cloud and then you can access the volume right from the cloud. And it's gonna be super fast because you're gonna have all the bells and whistles to make things much, much faster over there. That is how the Docker volume actually works. Well, as I said, there are many different advantages volumes contains and some of the most important as we just saw is volumes are easier to back up or migrate than bind mounts. I mean, we have not spoken about the bind mounts yet. We'll talk about that once we get there in our next lecture. But for now, just understand that there is something called as bind mount and volumes are much, much easier to back up and migrate than bind mount. And you can also note that you can manage volumes using Docker CLI command or Docker API and even from the Docker desktop. So everything is possible to do that within Docker. And Docker volume works in both Linux as well as in Windows container that we just discussed in our last lecture. So you can do that as well. And volumes can be more safely shared among multiple containers, which we just saw in our last slide. And volume drivers let you store volumes on remote host or cloud provider, encrypt the content of the volumes and add other functionalities. That's what I was telling you in our last slide that you can move the volume to a cloud to make things even more faster and secure for you. Well, as that said, let's discuss about volume even further in a practical overview. All right, so this is the Docker desktop that we have been using. And you see that there is something called as volumes tab over here. And you can see that we can create a volume right from the Docker desktop itself. It says that containers can use the volume to store the data. So all the data in the containers is lost once it is removed, but containers uses the volume to persist the data. That is the power of the volume itself because we know that, which I have really not told you, every single container has got a writable layer in it, which you can use it to write things into the container. But once you delete the container, those data will be gone along with the container. But if you want to store a data which is created by the container and used by the container, then you can use volumes to persist the data. And that is the power of the volume itself. Well, as I said, 
If I'm gonna create a volume, I can just hit this create volume and I can give a name here, something like test volume or whatever. And if I hit create, it's gonna create a volume for me. But once you click this test volume, it's gonna tell you that there is no data to be displayed and it's not being used by any of the containers. So unless until we use this volume anywhere, you can't really see the usage of the containers within this particular volume. We can see the exact same thing from the command line interface as well. So we can just do docker volume and if I hit enter, it's gonna present you some of the information saying that you can use the command like create, inspect, ls, prune and rm to check out the volume information. So now I just say docker volume and ls command, it's gonna tell me the list of volume exist within my docker. And the driver currently is a local driver, which means this is the local volume that we have created. And if it's gonna be a cloud driver, then it's gonna have the cloud over there. And then the volume name, as you can see over here, is a test volume, which means this is the one that we just created from the Docker desktop, this guy, right? And now if I wanted to inspect what is the test volume and where it is being stored, I can just say Docker volume inspect and then I give the name of the volume as test volume. And if I hit enter, you will see that it says that this is created by this date and time. And this is the driver, the label has nothing in it. And there's a mount point, which it tells that this is the place where the Docker volume is being mounted. We will see how this data is gonna look like in a minute in WSL2. And I will show you how you can access that, but you got the point, right? Like this is how it has been stored. And then you can see the name of the volume as test volume, uh, that is option is null, the scope is local as well. Cool. Those are the information for the volumes over here. Well, as I said, we'll see where this volume is even been created in WSL2. You know that every single time while we try to run the Docker container or pull a Docker image, it is gonna be using the WSL2 engine behind the scene so that is exactly what we are gonna be seeing in this particular WSL2 as well. So I can just access the WSL2 by just doing this, like clear the screen. Uh, and if I just say CD of double slash WSL dollar, and then I just have to put something like Docker desktop. So if I just do this, you will notice that we can now get into WSLs of the Docker desktop over here, this particular directory. And over here, if I just put an LS, you should see that it is gonna show me all the different directory which is there within the WSL2 within my machine. So basically this is the Linux operating system which is running within my machine and it's showing all those information for me over here. And now if I just wanted to see the volumes which is created within this particular Docker desktop, within this particular WSL2, then I can just say CD of MNT, which is the mount, and then if I just do an LS, you should see there is something called as Docker desktop disk. And I can just do a CD of Docker desktop disk. And if I hit enter, and if I do an LS, you should see there are gonna be even further folder. I know it's kind of painful to get into each and every folder, but guess what? There is a very, very nice little utility available within Windows 11 operating system with WSL2, which is nothing but you can see the entire WSL2 from your Windows machine itself over here, as you can see. Do you see that this is the this PC, which is gonna be the C colon of my current machine. And you also have got a Linux over there. So this is coming because we have installed the Linux distro within our machine, which is the Windows 11 machine. And also you can notice that we have got a WSL2 on this particular machine. So that's why we, we get the Linux option here. So if I click this, you will see there is a Docker desktop and there is a Ubuntu coming up. This Ubuntu is nothing but the entire Ubuntu of your WSL2 which is running behind the scene, like entire volume just running. And if you just see there is a folder called as a mount, and if you go to the mount, there are gonna be things like C, D, WSL, WSLG. And if I go see the WSL over there, you'll also notice there is something called as Docker desktop. And also there is a Docker desktop bind mounts. We'll talk about the bind mounts later in this series, but this is the Docker desktop which I'm talking about. 
And over there, you see there is CLI tools, shared sockets and stuff. We are not worried about this particular directory where we just saw the volume in the inspect. Rather, we actually need to go to the Docker desktop and then go to the mount. And there is something called as Docker desktop disk. This is the one that we were just seeing over here, right? So if I just go to the Docker desktop disk, data, and there is something called as a Docker folder. And within this Docker folder, you'll also see there is something called as volumes. And there is this test volume that we just created from the Docker desktop, this guy. Within this test volume folder, you'll also see there is an underscore data folder, which is kind of empty because you have not created any data within this particular volume. That's the reason why it is empty at the moment. But yeah, this is the volume that we are looking for. We just did the inspect of our Docker volume using the inspect and we got this path from there. So I'll just go back again to show you what I really mean about that. So if I just go see colon and if I just do Docker inspect of the volume, which is the test volume, you see that it goes all the way to the var lib docker volumes and the test volume. I know the path is not exactly the same, but this is the mount point for the Docker desktop to get to that particular volume. And behind the scene in WSL2, this is not the exact path, but in Windows world, it points to this particular path that you are seeing here. The Docker desktop mount, Docker desktop disk, data, Docker, and volumes. It's pretty much exactly the same, like Docker volume and then the volume test volume, but just that there is a bit of a change over here. That's how in Windows world it does. So hopefully you got the idea of how you can also look at the volumes from within the Windows machine. I have already spoke quite a lot of details about the volume intrinsic details, but we have not really used the volume in an container and how the Docker volume is going to persist the data, which is going to be created by the container. So not to talk about that, we have to wait until our next lecture because this lecture is already with quite a lot of information. I don't really want to bombard you with a lot of details. So in order for you to use this volume, we are going to wait until our next lecture. So catch you in the next one.